5.52 a.m. on the last day of my second to last semester of undergrad. And what do I have to say? First thing in the quote-unquote morning? Baby, it's a fucking mess. It's a fucking mess. I'll give you all a tour. You all, probably about five people who watch this candid little chronicle of Alexified. A little tour in just a few minutes, but just just look at this chaos. This is the lived-in experience of an English major. Alexa, turn on prefix. Okay. Alexa, turn prefix orange. Okay. I don't know. I'm not trying to see that bright ass white light. Straight up in the morning. Oh. It's also the epitome of an English major having my Alexa lights named prefix and suffix. Can't get up without the slides. Let's look at this chaos over here. Exposing the hell out of myself. This was, this is when we ended up last night after trying to ferociously write my first and last essay for my history class. It didn't happen, it didn't happen. I'm just gonna accept the one third of a grade off deduction let's see how quickly or slowly I take to finish that among all of my other <laughs> struggles <laughs> dashing to finals dashing bitch it's 5 55 angel numbers every time it happens today I'm gonna record it because I swear I always catch them from 111 all the way to 555 morning and p.m. I always catch and 1111 Right place, right time, bitch. Some way, somehow, amid this struggle and chaos. <laughs> I don't care. You're not a real ass nigga if you're not putting your slides on. Any type of intellectual, I don't give a fuck for you. Just stay humble, nigga. I could say that shit. I could say that shit. Because not only am I black as fuck, but when you embody a do rag as expeditiously as I do, you could say nigga. You could say it. We outside, NASA vibes, let me embody, incept, incept into the brain, the brain cells of those genius and great. Usama Mita. It's either a caffeine addiction or debilitating anxiety dissociation. No in between, real ones only know, they know this one, trash, Loki. The actual blend and drink, mwah, fire, chef's kiss, bomb diggity. This is the way to go. This is just a mixer. No alcohol, we're sober, so this is where we get our chaser and mixer. Let's do this and not jinx ourselves. Not have a fucking catastrophe. Ooh, you see how hot that is? I'm my uptown boys. I don't know the words. Singing that song all summer, but it's French Montana. I used to think the words were all my uptown boys looking live. That's how much of a clown I am. Ooh, look how sexy that is with two G's. Oh. Damn. It's a shame this shit is so beautiful. I'm so stressed and I haven't been to the Kelsey Center in like. A month and a half. I'm just trying to make it here without killing myself, you know what I mean? Like, trying to drive without getting a ticket or pulled over by the cops. You know? I couldn't really vlog in the meantime. Here to finish this essay, hopefully by 11. An email like, so sorry, but uh, I was caught between a panic attack and surviving. As decrepit as this looks, I feel like this is it. Like, this is what you expect from a university college experience. Also this, closer to God and pain. Okay, I'm getting on here for the first time in the flesh to go on a bit of a rant because 
I feel like this semester has been so holistic in everything I've gotten the privilege and opportunity to experience. That's a blanket statement. I could say it for spring 2022 because darling, we're in the moment of actively unpacking all the things we've never got to process as we've fast forwarded through. I say we to just talk about myself in the third person, but also we in relation to my capstone group. My capstone group and I have been introspecting into a very airy, philosophically nebulous philosophically nebulous question of to be or not to be an educator. I think within this question, you really get to binarize things. And every time I'm at the realization of this binary, I get mad at myself just as much as my my brain just itches and I, I, I feel the gratification in my veins because you really do produce two different types of people when you ask this question. It's the people who will be empathetic and will jump right into the heart of the problem, even if that means sticking their neck on the floor and someone steps right over it. Or you get the people who are entitled and who will do anything to keep their entitlement in this little box. And you just know nothing will ever get with them. They will keep themselves capped at their entitlement in a way that the empathy cannot penetrate. And <sighs> it's just, it's so mind boggling to always be thrown in these predicaments where I absorb anxiety from the experience. And I say, I know I'm feeling regulated. I know I'm not stressed, but my heart and my body just, they're fighting me and they absorb this anxious energy. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, it's because my empathy was trying to protect me from someone else's entitlement. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've had to learn about my foundation and my grounding this semester is I cannot let people pollute my empathy despite their best efforts and I will always want to be right in the thick of grassroots community building. I will always be right in the thick of long-winded, weighted questions into and within. Even if it feels like it's going to cost my soul, that is my lifeline and that is my life's work. That is what I was put on this earth to both investigate and help other people narrate. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I spent the entire day stressed about this essay for my professor to just message me on Canvas like, Hi Alexis, I understand completely. You will receive no late penalties on your essay. Aww, I used to just see dollar signs flash in front of me before I basically demanded I go to go be oppressed daily for free at this institution for the most part. But now I just see the 4.0 flash in front of me and I don't know which one's worse. Feeling like you can't even afford paying to be oppressed or feeling like your whole future is determined by these fucking arbitrary ass numbers oh my god oh my god like i thought about the stress of the paper all day and the stress of doing this little abstract vlog all day i've forgotten my phone many places i've been so disconnected while connected to screens i've aired out so many philosophies to the point where i'm just like all I want to do is get home, eviscerate, right, and do something to take the edge off, turn off my brain. I'm going to edit this motherfucking shit, the video, and I'm going to be out. Like, I'm ending things pretty gracefully, but at the same time, I feel like I look a fucking mess. I sound a fucking mess, and I can't put a thought straight together, but uh, whatever. Can I? Oh my 
god I, like i realize now i think this semester is the most i've learned on a spiritual cellular level and i've learned that i can pass the torch forward to alexified that will be the only space i exist as a persona with my face behind it but doing this damn video all day and i knew it would be the death of me but it was a good test it was a good try run to know how much i need to step into the sidelines of my own creativity and i do not need to be front facing because i feel like i could have written all this energy out in a much better productive conducive and healthy way and Instead of like memorializing myself as chaotic and that's what I feel like me in motion or me capturing myself as a snapshot does but at the same time I'm like oh I should document more I should document me and my living experience my life and it's like we, we wouldn't be catching a still image of the silhouette anyway there'd be no way like this screen these series on Instagram these flips on Twitter Nothing's gonna fucking cut it. You just gotta hang out with me in order to get the real Alexified experience. Or maybe I think the Lex experience. You get the Alexified experience, no problem. But for the Lex experience in the flesh, you just need to hang out with a motherfucker. There's no way to simulate that. And it makes me sad just as much as it makes me want to lean into my passive elements of being a front facing artist and a makeup artist. I don't know. Did this all make sense? gonna wrap this up gonna conclude this and say that it's been a hell of a fucking journey but i'm still standing one final thing i am going to say is i think one of the most healthy things and fulfilling things you can do as an artist is give people a space to fully explicate their denouement that's one of my favorite words, favorite literary terms. You cannot leave things pending in a world so full of tension and stress if you have the courage and confidence to begin telling a story with someone, always finish it. Do not leave anything unsaid. Do not leave anything unwritten. I think the biggest thing I can say sort of kind of narrating from the past tense or reflecting on the past and grounding myself in the present that past made is I could have died in January in my car accident and one of the first things I said when I was questioning why did I survive this and why did this only happen to me why did I not hit any other cars why did no one else seem to see this for miles until they did? One of the first few things or answers I said in response to those questions was, I was meant to teach. I was meant to share my story. There was something I was meant to say and the universe or God himself said, nope, not today. That's not her day. And ever since I've really been obsessed with always providing that solution, always finishing, because I would have been misremembered in such an egregiously inappropriate way with all the things that I did not say and all the things that I did not write before. So now I say it, I say it with vitriol, I say it with candor, I say it with pride, I say it when I don't know what to say, I say it when I don't have words, I say it when I'm exhausted, I say it when I'm empowered, when I feel powerless say it in life you will encounter so many people who have preserved themselves in their ideas phase they'll be the dreamers they'll be the ones who ignite things with bash fashion maybe passion but they'll be the ones with no follow through you can meet a lot of dreamers and thinkers or you can meet a lot of doers who dream all philosophically are the same but one is based in productivity and grassroots community building and the other is based in self-loathing quite honestly it's up to you to decide what pen to paper you are going to explicate